Um, where's Don gone? Is he still here? Can't see him. Oh, there he is. Um, okay, cool. So, um, today our special guest is Bear Love. And um, Bear's come today to share his experience, strength and hope with us with his gong and in the world of gong and share some of his experiences which we're all looking forward to i know i am um don and bear have you two have you guys met before i'm trying to remember uh, absolutely yes absolutely you played together yes you played yes. together yes and so, wow. which place when you brought your big gong in and we had all these people there i forget who was uh, that was todd that was todd the big bang Oh yes, the big bang. Oh. Wow. But um yeah, bless you. So um let's just start with um let's do some ohms together. It's a nice simple one to start us this morning. Um with our little shruti. <clears throat> nice and short and sweet, okay. Just take a moment. Just to come into the present time and space. And think about today. It's a, you know, it's a special day for Vesak. The first full moon in May. The day of the birth of the Buddha, the enlightenment, and the leaving of the physical body. So let's just take a nice, nice deep inhale. Inhale deep. And let's om together wherever you are in the world. Nice deep breath in. Om. Om. Beautiful. Good morning. So, um, <clears throat> Bear, uh, for those of you who don't know, Bear has is one of the few people with an 80-inch gong. And uh, Bear, just tell us a little bit how that came about, if you could. Just tell us a little bit about your story. How did you end up with an 80-inch Okay. Okay. I, I started playing gong in about 2002. I had my first, my first gong. Um, and I was doing a sound journey on the Isle of Wight, actually. Uh, with a friend of mine called Peter uh, and I, I was doing this sound journey and I just saw this massive gong I had this vision of this massive gong and I was talking to my friend I said I've just seen this massive gong and he said well they, apparently there, there's, there is a really big gong that Paisley have so um, I contacted uh, someone that Don knows well Stefan Cartwright, lovely guy and um, he suggested I go and see uh, Julian. So I went through Julian to East uh, to, to Heisty, and when I got there, um, there wasn't just this one gong. They have a master gong. It wasn't just this other gong. There was actually uh, this 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 blonde gong that was there. And they said we found this in the basement. It's been there for about twenty plus years. I'm not too sure who's made it now, but um, I think they pull it in 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 the basement of the factory because. It wasn't burnished dark at the edges and they thought it was a bit of a hole, you know. But when I played it, I said, this is the one. And I didn't have the money to buy it at the time. I had a beautiful VW camper van and the whole thing happened following inspiration. So I sold my camper van, uh, which was my little luxury to buy this gong uh, that to share with people. But the thing is, Bob, at the time, I had no idea. I, there was no calculation involved. I, I was living in Stratford, East London at the time, and I had this lockup I was renting. So when it was delivered, 
it went straight into this lockup and uh, hung it on these wooden rafters. And every now and again, I'd go in there and just, you know, tap it a little bit. And, and then my friend Andre Schmeichel, this incredible didgeridoo virtuoso from the Czech Republic, he saw me playing this Paiste Gong, this 32 symphonic with these uh, uh, silicon flumers. He said, I've never heard uh, gongs played like that. Uh, and I said, um, I've got another gong bigger than this. I said, it's wider than my arms. So I showed him this big gong in the garage and he said, do you want to come on tour with me? And that was really the start of everything. You know, I ended up with one of these removal vans to put the gong in with a towel lift and had started this amazing journey. I, I, I feel totally blessed. Yeah. Really do. That's an incredible story from a vision to a gong yes. and then going out on tour. Uh, and playing. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, there wasn't really any flumes at the time to, uh, obviously I've got the, the, the biggest Paiste mallet they make. I can't remember the, the name, is it an M8 or something? No, it's um, than that, isn't it? Is it? I can't remember, but it's huge. And I, I use that for the, for the bass. I, I, I touch it really gently, but there was nothing available in terms of flumes to, that were consistent and to get the refined sound. So I started um, exploring myself, making my own. I certainly spent a couple of thousand pounds uh, from, thousands of toy balls dog balls to agricultural sorting machines where they use big rubber balls in there to stop the machines getting blocked up so uh and eventually around about 2000 i think 2012 um i i found these 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 beautiful silicon balls such high grade um if you take the ball off the stick and flick it near your ear it chimes like a musical instrument i mean that they're, they're, they're amazing and I haven't had any loss of performance since 2012. So I started using these on the gong and I started traveling uh, and playing anywhere really where, where people invited me uh, from monasteries, churches, uh, underground basements, uh, prehistoric caves. They found the saber tooth tiger tooth there once. And it's been an incredible journey. I met the most beautiful people. And I find that the gong talks to people in its own kind of language, whatever language, wherever people come from in the world, there's, um, it talks to people and uh, people mm. come away because it's such a big gong, you get enveloped in the sound. Um, quite amazing. Oh, Don, uh, what Bear's saying there is really interesting because I know um, you, you have quite a comprehensive list of places to play with gongs. Um, and what, what's kind of, what's the most interesting place that you, you've taken it and played it? Um, I think the cave was really nice because there was lots of, there was lots of negative energy there. Um, it was used in the war for making munitions and, and uh, chemical warfares and things. And we went there just to change the energy of the place. So um, it was really interesting for me to, to do that. And the sound in the cave, the one issue was, you can't use flumes on a, on a gong that's damp. And in a cave, it's quite damp. Um, yeah. I mean, this cave was so huge, I drove my van inside it and unloaded the, you know, and there's all these subterranean passages. But um, so we had a heater uh, uh, on the back of the gong to keep it warm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. On. Um, let's talk a little bit while we're here on this subject with Bear about um, you know, I think most of us think, oh, we're going to play the gong in our own home or in a studio or maybe a little bit out in the street. But it can, we can take it all over to create ceremony and ritual. You know? Can you hear me, Don? No, you're very soft. Uh, oh, but, I wonder you know, if everybody, everybody else, else, else hear me. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I was just talking about places that we can play the gong. Oh, different yeah. places where we can go bears being playing in caves and and all sorts of places and i know it's important to you that we start to take it out into different places like you know homes funeral parlors in places like that yes. well yes especially uh, uh to knock on any door everywhere in the world i think there's so many different places to play I'm sure that you've played in most of them already since you got to the gong. I'm always looking for a new place. <laughs> Eden um, was, used to talk to us about his gorilla gonging. 
where he would he would run into an environment with a small gong, I think almost like a ninja. Uh, <laughs> he, he used to do his ninja gong. I've experienced that. You have. I have at Gaunt's house. He, um, I don't you remember that, Eden? Where is he? Uh, not Gaunt's house at uh, One World Festival. You went to the One World Festival. Yeah. What happened there? I was with Peter, the guy from the Czech, and uh, yeah. you said I'd like to do some gorilla gonging, and you came in like a ninja. <laughs> well, it certainly makes people stop and stop talking at least, yeah. and and uh, and uh, pay attention. Yeah. And remember, Don, we played at Wookie Hole down in the cave there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that? Sure, I remember. <laughs> Two hundred and ninety feet below the surface of the uh, of um, Cornwall, I think. Oh no, Somerset, isn't it? Yeah. It yeah. So we we've been to a few caves. I wonder, actually, while we've got everybody on here, if people could start to put into the chat so everyone can yeah. see, yeah, if that's okay, um, and then we can start to make a list of where people are playing or have played. Give us your most interesting places you've played, including if you were sat on the toilet or something like that. Where's the most interesting <laughs> place you've played your gong? And um, let's see if we can build up a comprehensive list. Oh, Aiden's disappeared. Where is the chat? Um, How do you? Your... Oh, it's on your Zoom. Is it where? Yeah, there's, there's a little button that says chat. <sighs> and you push that, you'll be able to chat with us. Okay. Um, so, Bear, um, while we're on the subject of flumies, I know that, um, you know, I've got one of your flumies, which you very graciously sent to me, and I'm, I'm eternally grateful for. And Don's got a full set. And, um, you know, I use them every time I play. Um, what, what is it about? Because you kind of prefer flumies over the, over, the, over the mallet, don't you? You play pretty much with them all the time. I, I, yes and no. I, 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 there, there, there is definitely a place for both in playing gongs. Uh, for instance, I have a constellation of gongs. I've got the 80-inch, and I use the biggest peisty mallet on that for the bass sounds. And then the flumies come, come in and go over that. They kind of envelop you with the sound rather than coming at you. Okay. I've got a big Vietnamese nipple gong, uh, which I use a, a beta for, a, a mallet, and my, my Wuhan gong too. But all these gongs are, are used with mallets as well as flumies. I think they both have a, a, a very important place. Mm. Um, what do you think, Don, about, you know, kind of, the mixture of flumey and mallet what what are the what do we use the flumey for mainly and what what are we doing with that what's the what are we achieving well there's many different techniques you, you can use uh, it depends on whether you want to use your voice and the flumey at the same time it's a wonderful technique to weave your voice into the voice of the flumey as it's on there uh, we use the flumies for what we call angel talk, which is uh, is sort of like mm -hmm, gibberish in a way, isn't it? We call it, and so the flumies say something here, and then it the other one answers back, and it becomes a conversation, um, and and so we use it in that way as well. There, there's the one you should be talking to, though. Or how do you? Give us a demonstration. I'm in my van at the minute <laughs> because I haven't got we haven't we haven't got any uh, signal in West Wales. So I had to drive out in the lockdown. So I'm, I'm just in the van at the minute, parked up on the road. <laughs> you don't have your gong with you. Uh, I, 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 I haven't got it here. Oh, it's Thanks. it's locked away, nice and safe. Good where you have your gong up and. Uh, you can play for everybody. Ah, oh, but okay. um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't have my gongs with me right now. Oh, but right. um, yeah. Let us know in the future so that we can. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. bless you, thank you. You know, Don, I, 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 I there's something uh, I, I, I uh, um, 
I remember being at, at Gaunt's house, uh, meeting you through uh, uh, um, a, a good friend. Um, I've got, <laughs> I said his name earlier, Stefan, Stefan Cartwright, yeah, and um, I, I helped out a bit with Starhenge to carry them big rocks, and uh, you, you, you showed me uh, a little bit about the gong, and I'm really grateful, thank you so much, and... Uh, you still have pictures of that. Oh, special times. Have you been back to Gons and played any lately? I haven't, I haven't been back there. Uh, I, 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 do a few festivals. Um, I, I, I do one-to-ones, um, and I travel around Europe a little bit. But um, uh, I haven't been back there. In fact, um, um, we're looking at perhaps next year making a trip to India w with a big gong. Ooh, so, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Probably in the south. Yeah. Uh, um, not too many people have a gong your size. Yeah. I think is the, uh, the wonderful thing that they don't realize those long, low waves that come through your gong, of how powerful it is on the yes. cells of the body. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Um, it, it's, 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 it's quite a, a, quite a thing. And you can't do it on your own, Don. It's, it's, a, it's a massive gong. It weighs 175 kilos. Mm -hmm. um, the stand is another 175 kilos, perhaps, or more. Uh, and it's a community event. And that's the lovely thing about it. I turn up somewhere and beautiful people come and help. And it's definitely a, a community thing. And I, I'm blessed to be part of it. Oh my. What's your next step? You going somewhere else? Uh, the next step is, um, I think India be, uh, I, I may be going to Viprava in Czech Republic, but it depends on the lockdown. I no one. it's hard to plan this year, really. I guess just being open and see what happens. Yeah, we're all the same way, aren't we? We're out on a limb waiting to see what's going to happen next. Yes, yes. But so far, so good. Yeah. Now it's leading us into the television. Now everybody is on, hmm, that means we don't have to fly or travel anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a beautiful time actually. Um, for me and Shion, it feels very much like if we're on retreat, you know, having this time to 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 uh, a different pace of life and a different openness, um, a different presence with things. Mm. You ever get to Ireland, Scotland? I haven't been. Not with the gongs. I haven't. I have. Oh, it's been so many years. I wonder why. I'd like to. Yeah, we should. Um. <clears throat> I'm just looking at this list of places that people have played here, Don. And um, someone's saying they played at their, Rosa, Rosario saying played at the, uh, the funeral, her mother-in-law's funeral. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. And this is an interesting one. The Doctor's TV show. Someone's played a gong on a TV show. Whoa. Doctors. I don't know who that was because Yells put it on there. Um, oh, Hollywood Hills. Uh, Maria Shriver, Alzheimer's fundraiser, weddings, uh, places of war. Nice. Mm. I mean, mm. that'd be great, Bear, to to get maybe mm. get over to France and play. Um, yes. You know, somewhere over there. Um, yeah. Well, I'm I'm open, and my heart is saying yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah lovely yes. mountains and lakes. A lot of people enjoy playing out in nature which is really nice. Mm. So um, one of the things um, that we decided we would talk about today as well, which I believe is a subject that's kind of close to your own heart, is um, the intention of and the power of prayer and intention when we yes. play the gong in a healing um, way. But I think every time we play the gong, there's healing going on, isn't there? It's kind of, it's kind of a freebie that you get when you play, you know. <laughs> Uh, something happens <laughs> anybody who plays it my kids like first started to play mine they're like oh dad wow this is amazing you know um so let's let's talk a little bit about that don and bear the power of intention and, and prayer when we play let's open that up 
So why is that important to you, Bear? What, what, what is it, how is it part of your process? Well, I, I realise that every day I, I meet myself in disguise. You know, I meet a part of oneness that, uh, um, that doesn't actually may look, not, not look like me in form. But the, the shining spark from eternity is there. Um, and sometimes, you know, we, we get out of tune with all the stresses from the world and, uh, and we lose ourselves, you know, in, in the veil. Um, I, I find that everyone that comes, I look at them, I look at their perfection and their innocence. Um, and that's what I wish to see rather than any other stuff that may present itself. And so I'm always healing a part of myself and my prayers to, to my brother and my sister are prayers that come back to me. And this is how we're all healed together on this journey in life. Uh, we share one heart and it's the heart that connects us all to the heart of the universe. So when I stand there, I, I don't think what I'm going to do. I, I look at the mirror, uh, I look at the gong as a mirror in a way, a mirror of my consciousness. And my, my job is to step out of the way I've got to be clean and empty. So my mind, my mind is, is still, it's not thinking of things, but my heart is open. And I say, spirit, show me the way here. And in the silence, in the stillness, we can hear. And I play, then I, I take a step to the gong and I play and I wish him peace, freedom from pain. You know, it, it depends or, or reminding the person that they are loved and they're loved. Um, and th these prayers are carried on that this carry a wave of sound that they then feel, and it's almost like working with essences or something quite subtle. You can work really powerfully, and all the gifts, all the gifts that you wish, are the gifts that you receive yourself. Beautiful life. Mm. You know, Ange has just made a comment and said it's so beautiful to hear. Bear, thank you. Oh. And yeah, and I think everybody on this group on this Zoom today is probably feeling the same way. It's lovely to hear, Don, right? Yes, why don't you ask if anybody would like to comment and yeah. ask Bear a question? Yeah, um, I'm happy to do that. If anyone wants to just um, pop in uh, a question down there so I can open it up. Um, it's so hard for me to, let me unmute Ange. Hi, Ange. Hi. How are you doing? Really good. Actually, I don't have a gong yet, but I'm going to take a class with Philippe Garnier in, in, uh, cause I live in Paris mm. in, in August. And so I was going to either take the class or buy a gong. So I thought maybe I should take a class and play the gongs and see which one I like best. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, so it might be a possibility I could organize, you could bring your gong to Paris. Ooh, and wonderful. There's a really beautiful uh, hall in a Salvation Army um, place, and they have uh, even Tibetan monks go and teach meditation there. So it has very good energy, and it would hold. I don't know how many people you would need to uh, gather, but uh, could be a possibility. Yes, please get in touch about that. It sounds wonderful. Okay. So, Thank you. And, um, so what is it about what they just said there about prayer and intention? Is that, is that what's drawing you towards playing the gong? And what, what kind of brought you? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, actually, I teach Nada Yoga. I use a harmonium and I sing ragas. And I don't have a shruti box, but I have also the um, tuning forks. And so the gong to me is... It's basically the, it's like a direct access to divine source because it's it, it, the, the gong sound is immediate. And to add the, the, the intention of, or the, the offering of looking for the light in other people and to reflect that, to me, that's just so beautiful to hear. And without any judgment, just to get out of the way and, um, and offering joy or or compassion or ahimsa whatever you want mm. that's to me it's that really touches me that's, that's beautiful lovely. yeah lovely hey bear this is good stuff right <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks Ange. what's really yeah. interesting for me as well bear is something that you said and we talk about it as well quite often recently is getting out of your own way yeah you know yeah let's let's talk about that a little bit don as well 
getting out of your own way and letting the letting the gong kind of play through you. Um, let's talk about that process. How do you get out of your own way? It, I mean, it's a simple phrase, but it's actually quite, um, as all simple things are, it's, it's got quite deep philosophical meaning, but it's not always that easy to do, right? Well, Bob, what does it mean to you? Well, for me, when I get out of my own way, I turn off my internal chatter, Don. Okay. You know, because I can have this terrible kind of internal critic who will just whitter away in my ear about any old nonsense. And and my ego, it's, a, you know, allowing mm. that to fall away and come into the present moment so that I can experience myself through what I suppose is the observer, you know, the, the kind of silent mm. witness that doesn't criticize, that doesn't make judgment, that doesn't observe me in a way that is going to make me any less or more, but just lets me be. And um, I think for most people, especially, that's been a process, it's been a heck of a journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob, uh, you know, Bear, you know what Bob specializes in, uh, many things, of course, but one of them is that he's sort of been the spearhead or wearing more and more masks, wouldn't we say? Uh huh. And uh, I, have you ever done that using masks while you play? No, I haven't. It's quite an interesting experience when you have a mask on. And if you can see yourself, like if you have a mirror there, yes. uh, then that also puts you into a different space. And all of a sudden, that face is playing the gong. It's not you any longer. It's like mm. the gong neutralizes us as players. Take we are ego, of course, here. So we just supplement another kind of persona on there. Uh -huh. And so I, I wondered, uh, what is that magic of the mask when people play with a mask on? I know here we do Halloween and all mm. that. And, uh, and in Japan, they do Kabuki, etc. But gong players around the world playing a mask. I used to play one with a, a Donald a Trump's mask on. <laughs> uh, I did this mainly uh, it was because my, my name is Donald J and his name happens to be Donald J. So I put on his mask and I play the gong. <laughs> I don't know if it does any good archetypally, but it, it's... Uh, yeah. I have a feeling that's I think um, it, it, it connects, Don, you know. I mean, when we first started to play with this idea of using the masks when we're playing with the gong, and it, you know, you can use lots of different things, a red nose, but I think we're going to do a session alone on working with masks and looking at the four temperaments. But it did remind me of something you said there, Bear, when you said you come up against on um, view or see uh a different version of yourself, a new version of yourself, mm. you know, often. Yes. And um, when my, my work with the masks explores that, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's, that's the exploration, you know, yeah. how many versions of me are there? And actually the work with the masks does the opposite of what most people assume. It doesn't cover it reveals. Mm. Mm. So it's a process of revelation. Nice, nice. Yeah. I, I haven't tried that. I've tried being blindfolded and playing, you know, and that's quite a that's quite an interesting thing too, because suddenly you're 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 hearing a lot sharper and you're feeling perhaps a bit more and less thinking. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think um, <clears throat> at some point it'd be really interesting to, to uh, set something up with the, the, you know, the big gong in London or somewhere with the masks and get lots and lots of people there. And we want to try and make a piece of theatre of the soul, you know, uh -huh. tell some kind of beautiful story from the Mahabharata or something. I don't know. Using words and music and poetry and Rumi and Kabir and Guru beautiful. Nanak and beautiful and you know and just create this beautiful story. Yeah, uh, it's it's you know it's a far-seeing kind of project that Don and I have been discussing for a while. But 
it would be just awesome to make it work somehow. Yeah. Count me in. <laughs> yeah. Sounds yeah. lovely. It would be Sounds awesome. lovely. Yeah. 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 Um, Michelle Rudolph, yes. I'm going to unmute you. I know you had a question for Bear. So I have a nipple gong. It's only 24 inches, but I was wondering what size mallet you use on your nipple gong. And the second question was, do you use Flumi on your nipple gong and what ones do you use? Okay, that's a really good question. So I've got a 90 centimeter Vietnamese nipple gong. It's very, very thick brass. It's really thick. So it's got a very deep sound. Um, I, the, 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 I use a handmade mallet. Um, it's handmade. I, I can't really give you the size maybe. And it's quite heavy because I use a, it's used a steel rod bar with a, thre a threaded rod bar. Um, that's what I use. I guess the, is, the head is about six centimeters, maybe something like that, but it's quite heavy. Flumis, I have tried flumis on there. Um, um, for the mallet, I strike it on, on the dome. I, with the flumis, I go around the dome. Um, and you get the sound of perhaps people speaking uh, or, or, or voices, things like this, um, I find. But, um, there's not a great range there's more because it's a tuned gong because it's it's a nipple gong if that helps and what's the head made out of would you make the head out of okay the head is a silicon ball okay uh, or or a rubber ball um and um it's uh on the thread bar that it, it's uh, you can adjust the tension of it by increasing the the, the by turning the, the the nut either side so yeah you can adjust it a little bit too oh cool awesome thank you lovely good luck um can we unmute lonely gong i believe someone's playing the gong in the background there so you might just have to stop that for a second so we can hear you lonely gong uh, oh it's a green know, screen oh wow it's the same screen you have oh, a question good. for bear yeah. hello there hi First of all, you have the most amazing eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, really. Oh, uh, bless you, brother. You've got a beautiful heart. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question is about the planetary gongs, how they're tuned to a frequency. Uh -huh. Now, I, could, I can't find a link to show how he calculated these frequencies, what he did or what he used. Any, you have information or anybody have information on that? Um, yeah, Bear, I don't know if you know, but there's a book on that, Hans Cousteau. Okay. Um, the Cosmic Octave. Uh-huh. If, if you get that book, and that tells you everything in there. Okay. Um, so thank yeah, all you. the information's out there. It's in a book. Uh-huh. Thank you. Is that okay, Lonely Gong? Uh, well, I was hoping for a more of a direct answer. I mean, like, did he, did he point like a laser at the planets and measure the frequency response or was it radio frequency or, or, or what? Uh, Tim, here we go, Tim. So the orbits of the planets, um, you can measure them in days, which is a time factor. Um, you can do the calculation yourself. That's, that's So uh, you can find out the number of days that it takes for, for each planet to, to, to orbit, which is a large number. You can work out the, the, the exact frequency because frequency is is um is a number of oscillations per second. So these are really, 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 really slow oscillations. But once you have the frequency and you keep doubling the frequency because an octave uh, is just either double or half the frequency is the same note. And you just keep doubling these really really low oscillations of the orbits of the planets and eventually you get into the range of human hearing and then and then you can take your chart which tells you which notes are which frequencies which you can also find on the internet and you can check the calculations yourself right i use a i have a a moon gong yeah i find it it's fun to like to hum the note that the the gong puts out. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Lonely Gong. You know, the, uh, in talking about these frequencies, you realize that 
in our solar system, Venus has almost a perfect orbit. So with Venus, I, what's the uh, frequency of Venus going? It's an A, isn't it? Yeah, a, an, an sharp A. Or something. Yeah, an A. Aiden's got one there. What does it say, Aiden? I can't see that, Aiden. Well, okay, unmute me. I have. Uh, Venus A2, yep. uh, 110.62. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, third octave A3, 221.23. Fourth octave A4, 442.46. So you can see there how every time Aidan gives us the frequency, it doubles mm. as we push up the octaves. But the original frequency that? of that Venus would have been way, 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 way down there somewhere. Right, Tim? Yeah, it's a certain number of number of seconds it takes to orbit the sun, mm. which is a lot of seconds, but it's slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult yeah, it is. to elongate the orbit because the, the tones change as the planets go around. So what they do is they find the golden mean of it. Yeah. They, that note, although the note as the planet goes around will change uh, within a certain mm -hmm, window, but yeah. both the gongs, they have to narrow it down to its essence, its fundamental frequency. And it changes over time as well, over the lifetime of the planet. The, the, orbit, the orbits are gonna, are gonna change, they'll shift. It's not, nothing is static, there's all, there's like movement within the movement within the movement. That sounds like a lot more gongs, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends how long we live. Don't tell I think me. we're all right for now, but in the lifetime, you know, in, in, a long, in a long time, the orbits, the orbits shift. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, Don, um, Ben mentioned something about the gong being a mirror. And I'd like you to pick up on this as well, Bear, that um, you feel like somehow it's mirroring, are you saying it's mirroring yourself back to you? And um, yeah, let's talk about that. Because I know that Don developed a mirror gong as well for a, 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 a mirror meditation, a, a tratacam. It's interesting because the gongs originally are mirrors. Every mm. plate uh, that we have of a gong is a mirror that reflects your view. Mm -hmm. So, but then they take the mirror away from the gong. Now, I just realized why they did that when I put it back. So the mirror gong is just simply going back to the original plate uh, that made the gong and combining Shurad Shabbat light and sound together. Uh, because after all, you know, we're in an age where people are using more color lighting. So if you have a gong that reflects the color, you've just uh, created more alchemy, uh, as you like, or if you like the, the theater of it. Mm. Nice. Uh, and Do, um, Bear. Um, yes. Don just said something there that's quite an interesting word. He said the theater of it. Yes, yes. And there is, there is an element of that sometimes yes. in what we yes. do right yes is yes. that something you consider i that definitely is something i consider in in my sound journeys um i've been doing some interesting sound journeys with a friend of mine called craig shanks that called into the darkness and um it's set in the scene in many ways like a theater um so there'd be there'd be some subtle fragrances there'd be some in, interesting sounds and um uh, not all of them actually are, are, are gentle sounds but some of them are quite stimulating uh for the senses too um so um yeah um and also people are blindfolded too so that that uh it's quite an interesting experience. So theater is a really big part. It, it, it enriches the experience, it enriches the sound journey. Um, and I think it's quite important sometimes to not to think about what we're gonna do, but to follow that with our hearts. And sometimes it can be quite stimulating the sounds, quite provocative even. 
you know i i think all healing is letting go of the past in in some way being able to see it with with different eyes with loving eyes about something that was quite threatening perhaps in the past and and letting that go so and the sounds the theater help that help that yeah. that that come through for sure so when i've had a gong i've had the gong up before the big gong um and someone said, can I give it a bash? Can I bash it? <laughs> and I said, and so this is interesting. Gongs reflect someone's consciousness. You know, they, they will, they, maybe they hit it with anger, frustration, or uh, ego, or something, or whatever it is. But it, it, ref it reflects something within themselves. And I think this is great for every gong player to, to be a witness to the sounds that are coming through. And, and to reflect upon that in oneself, you know, what is this? Nice. nice. Don, I know that um, theatre's an important aspect for you. You were an actor once. Some may say you are still an actor. I've heard you do your Hamlet. Oh, yes. Well, of course. It's, it's, uh, well, you know, uh, one of the things about being an actor uh, or playing the gong, you know, you notice a lot of people, they don't get stage fright. It used to be that people would get stage fright, but once you start playing the gong, there's no more stage fright because the ego gets so just de dematerialized that every one of us who are playing feel like we're a channel. And uh, it's, it's soul channeling. It hasn't got anything to do with our personalities at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this is when the healing takes place as uh, Bear would play, or Aiden would play, or I would play, or you would play. Uh, we are healing thyself first. It's a wonderful thing to know that as the gong vibrates all the cells of our body, that we are privileged to be able to heal ourselves first as it heals or makes whole the environment. So, uh, I don't know. We, I guess we can't say enough good things about the gong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So just to co continue on that, that theme, um, Don was saying there about how it dissolves the ego and allows us maybe to come into the present moment and do something that we wouldn't maybe normally do. I mean, not everybody's an extrovert personality. Not everybody can stand up in front of other people and do things, but maybe mm. when we move towards the gong in the right way, that something happens that starts to transform us. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm. Um, yes. So, so there's an internal theatre going on that you spoke about there, there, where we create yes. a space in people for their yeah. own internal theatre to take place. Yes. And we facilitate that theatre with sounds, yes. with voice as well. You know, sometimes we drop in a little shruti that we talk a lot about, Don, but some little bits of shruti wisdom, a little piece of shruti or poetry, which is important too, to stimulate this internal theatre. Um, and we call that, and it's something we've been, we talk a lot about, Don, theatre of the soul. Mm. I, th I think that this is, w once we uh, get all of our people doing theater now, I mean, pull out theater. No, no more kidding around. That we can uh, in show the theater of the gong would be, uh, uh, even help people to transform themselves into their, you know, their holistic self again. So uh, I'm looking forward to the next few years uh, as we approach uh, again each of the full moons of May. Uh, nobody much asks questions about why are we gonging on the full moon of May? Do you have anything you'd like to say to them about that? Um, well, we, we had a chat about that on Tuesday with um, uh, Moitza. We had a, a real good chat about the, the uh, Vesek celebration um are you playing today um are you playing today bear for for the full moon somehow i'll try to that sounds yeah. wonderful for the yes. celebration of um buddha's birthday yeah 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 
Yeah. Has anyone baked butter a cake, Don? Have you baked have you baked him a cake? <laughs> How many candles? <laughs> Um, you can't go wrong with 101. 101. <laughs> so um, just before, um, before we go, we've got 10 minutes left. Let's talk about um, the, the, uh, the theatre as well of, of the external theatre of the, of the gong. I mean, when we turn up somewhere, I mean, Tim's got this beautiful Pluto gong sat behind him there. And, you know, it's the first thing that people see when they come in and with you bear they're seeing this beautiful blonde gong or this golden gong yeah there's there is a sense of spectacle there and with all the gongs there's a sense of spectacle and wonder and they look yeah. like these kind of precious things you know that draw mm. people towards them there is there is a theater there too there's a visual yeah. theater before anybody even lies down or goes into whatever we're going to present. I know some people do a yes. little bit of yoga beforehand. Um, you know, is that something you consider as well? Yes. I've noticed something else with the big gong too, that uh, people stand in front of it and without it being played, they just stand in front of it and they look and they stand and they listen because the gong is such a, it's 80, it's two meters, 11 centimeters. So it's quite a wide surface and it reflects the ambient sound in the room in a different way. So it has a presence that people, oh, this is different, you know, this is, and they, they stand there for a while. But um, add, add into that, add into that, uh, it, it's the, the uh, I don't know if it's the protocols or the theatre or the simple way of, of, of how it flows next. Uh, I guess that could, that, you know, if we call that theatre, um, setting the scene very important for for people to to uh, to immerse to um, immerse themselves in it fully, so they get the the maximum benefit from it. That they're open. That that they're, they're they're not worried about the things. They're not thinking about what they're going to do after or something that's going you know what they're going to make for dinner. They're really present with themselves. So um, sometimes yes, there's some poetry. Sometimes some words. But I I. I try not to have an idea of what those words are. I, I, I really like it when they're spontaneous and they, they just come because that there's, there's a, it has a, a, a true resonance about it then. And the words really touch like a bell ringing. They touch people like a wave. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, uh, as soon as someone walks into a space and there are gongs or instruments in the room, the process is already starting, isn't it? As soon, you know, before anybody does anything, it's already started. It's begun. The experience yeah. has begun. They're already yeah. there. They're looking yeah. around and they're looking at you and whatever you're wearing and what you're saying. And because you're the guy playing the gong or the, or the lady playing the gong, you're the person who's going to like, you're the Pied Piper. Yes. Um, what do you think about that, Don, about the way that we kind of set up the theater of it, the, the spectacle of it, how it looks, the presentation? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, it's so many things have sprung from the gong. We have qi gong, we have gong qi. These are all movements with the gong. One of the things that perhaps we might uh, think about is those movements of gong qi and qi gong that the gong player might incorporate the full body gonging when they play. Uh, because we, we can, of course, we can do like just a taka, 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 and we do. But then for people begin to really play. And, and also, I'm, I'm sure that Bear does this a lot. You turn your back to the gong and let the vibrations go through your uh, conception and your governing vessels, your back and your front. Uh, so more movement uh, with the gong. I think the other thing that is people are turning into is because we have the ninth chakra of the gong hands, especially like with bear's gong. I'm, you put your hand just very close to the heat of coming through bear's gong, your hand. And so whatever you do with that hand after that, 
you are taking that healing energy and delivering it to another place. So uh, th there's a lot of exploration we need to do yet. Yeah, beautiful. Don, uh, um, every time we have conversations like this, uh, Don, and everybody <laughs> here today, obviously, everything, all this stuff is for you. And I wish we could unmute everybody and everyone could chip in, but it would be so difficult to manage. Um, if we were all sat in a room, it would be difficult, never mind all around the world. But it always feels like when we talk about sending energy through the hand and out into people, it's quantum, isn't it? It's quantum physics. You know, it's, 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 a, it, we're working on a quantum level. I love that idea. You know, we should we should be gone wizards, Don. <laughs> we, we're trying, but we'll learn. Uh, <laughs> but I, I really think that the idea is that we're gonging from our heart. Yeah, yeah. This is basically it. If you're gonging, you're not. Art is not open. So, uh, something to think about the heart. That yes. there are two chambers in the heart. And that the, so you actually have two hearts at one. So you really should be playing from the heart within the heart. And we call it the holy of holies, some people say. It's the heart within your heart. To, to really feel you're gonging from that space, uh, I think you get more of the self-healing effect. Hmm. And that, that to me is, again, stepping aside. Stepping aside and... If we step aside, that with the heart kind of unfolds like a flower. It's it's very present when we step aside. You know what we we're saying earlier. Yeah, beautiful. Um, I have a question. Somebody's popped their hand up. Jill, I'm going to unmute you. Um, we've got a couple of minutes, so if we could make it as money as possible. Hi, Jill. Hi there. I was actually answering to something earlier, but it's gone past now. However. Oh. Don might just tune into this one as well. Madame Blavatsky, right? She was the one who set up the Theosophical Society and all that side of things, right? She's talking about life in general and all this stuff. And she came up with a great, um, I've got the book, <laughs> a great line about the truth, okay? Which is the truth of all and what I think shines through the gold, you know? What's coming through all of us, how loving, how we are with just life itself. And I loved it that she said, it's all glamour. People think they see what they don't see. That's all there is to it. And when we think about that, then we glamorize whatever, but when they think they see what they don't see, and that's all it's about, yeah, the beginnings, you know? Yeah. And uh, thank you, Bear, it's the first time I've seen you. It's lovely to actually tune in with you. Are you here? Thank you. Thank and uh, I just thought I'd mention that because this is this book about Madame Blavatsky. Oh, oh. And uh, for me, it just tuned in when you're talking about theatre. Um, and, you know, the theatre of the mystic, the theatre of the myths, mm -hmm. how we bring things to play. And it's all about archetypes and the, mm -hmm. the dark and the light within all. It's the duality. So uh, anyway, thank you, Bear. That's lovely. Uh, brought thank that you, out. thank you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Jill. You flung a huge door open there that we could probably spend another hour talking about yeah. the mysticism <laughs> the of mystic. this. Yeah. <laughs> the theater another, of it all. Yeah, it's another conversation. Thanks, Jill. Okay. So I, I, just the last thought, we, we were asking about moments in your life. Well, I, I think that playing for the inauguration of a couple of presidents of the United States uh, uh, was uh, probably memorable to me and um, so I, I don't know if it did any good it doesn't have done on the physical playing too much but it was an interesting thing to play for the politicians in the world you know it's very difficult to break through to play for the we are ruling classes you see uh, so keep trying because if the gong has a way to bring people back to honesty again mm. and uh, we really need that more in, in our 
politics today. Lovely. Thank you, Don. Um, so we've come to the end of our time, sadly. I think we could all sit here all day and chat. Aidan, okay. Hi, we've got a minute. <laughs> These are bears flumies. Woohoo! And Ooh. they're fantastic. <laughs> and they're absolutely, mwah. Uh -huh. they're delicious. They they're are. sweet. They're lovely flumies. So uh, you really try and get one from bear because they're very special. These they are. are. Uh, yeah. Thank well, you, Eddie. Okay. Lindsay and I are doing a gong bath tonight online and we'll be using them, those bears yeah. flu tonight. Yeah. Can, can I just, can I just, can, thank you so much, Aidan. I, I really appreciate that, my brother. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Can, thank you. Would, I, would it be okay to show something? I've, I've, this is something that hasn't been seen anywhere on the internet yet. I, wow. I've just, uh, it's a new thing. Yeah. Ooh. A double flew me. <laughs> and um, it's got wow. two different heads. It's, it's, I use a tuning fork. Yeah, uh, and I, and and the sound is really, really, it's really sensitive. It's got a yeah. great sound. So that's a new thing that's going to come come by soon. Great. <laughs> well, two heads are better than one. <laughs> <laughs> and one heart is the best of all. Oh, I love you sharing the heart with indeed, all you yes. beautiful beings. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, lovely. What lovely, a great yeah. thing to go out on. Yeah. The thank you, Bear. Thank you very much. Oh, that is great. Don's so excited. He's so excited. He's bobbing up and down in his chair. I can see him. He's like going like this. Do you like what Bear did? What? We're going to yeah. take your tuning forks and turn them into flumies. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know whether Yen Zyger would like that. Oh, well. Such is life. <laughs> Thank oh, you. awesome. Look, guys, we're having too much fun. Right. Um, yeah, all right. It's time to go. But we, as usual, um, we will unmute everybody at the end, and anyone who wants to hang around and have a chat is welcome to do that. Um, but I just have to kind of formally close out our chat and thank Bear uh, for giving us your time and presence today and your wisdom and uh, your beautiful big heart. It's uh -huh. been so lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Bless you, thank you. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Lovely.